historian and Chris Ann is going all over the country preaching the good word and we're get, we get to hear it this afternoon. Chris Ann. Thank you Dixie County for allowing me in your home. It is a pleasure to be here. I look out here I see so many familiar faces. So many of people that have hugged my neck and prayed for me throughout the last couple years. And as I stand here in front of this hall of justice, I'm really reminded of the pledge that we all just took. You see, as a former military person, as an attorney, as a former prosecutor, I believe that a pledge, that an oath means something. My oath that I took in the military in the U.S. Army never expires. And it occurs to me that that Pledge of Allegiance that we just said puts liberty hand in hand with justice. You cannot separate the two. The very same liberty that our founding fathers pledged their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor, so that we would have the right, the ability to sit here today to let the government know of our grievances, to have our voices be heard. John Adams said that liberty must be protected at all hazards. He said that we have a right to it derived from our maker. He went on to say, but if we had not, our fathers have purchased it for us with their ease, their estates, and their blood. What has made liberty worth so much to so many? You know, maybe, John, uh, maybe Thomas Jefferson had a clue on this when he said, Can the liberties of a nation be thought secure? when we remove their only firm foundation, a conviction in the minds of men that liberty is a gift from God. You see, ladies and gentlemen, the thing that makes liberty worth so much to so many is the understanding that liberty is a gift from God. But what do we know about liberty today? We live in a world that cries, peace, peace, freedom, freedom. But what is peace? What is freedom? You cannot have peace without liberty. And freedom is only half the equation. The gift of liberty that we get from God is a two-part principle with two equally important parts. Liberty is freedom under moral constraints. Liberty cannot survive, I'm sorry, freedom cannot survive alone. If we live in a nation that's purely free, that means men are free to do whatever is right in their own minds. Free to rob, free to lie, free to cheat, free to murder. Pure freedom is anarchy. And at the same time, we cannot live in a nation built only on moral law. Moral law not mixed with freedom is theocracy. And theocracy in the hands of men is tyranny in the name of religion. Why do you think we fight so hard against Sharia law? that they had to give us a balance, 
to secure liberty, to secure liberty for ages and millions not yet born. But when we abandon our founding documents, when we disregard our moral foundations, liberty itself is in peril. Because after all, it is liberty that gives us a nation that says the power of the government is to be held by the people, not over the people. A nation that stands for the principles that says we have the right to disagree and speak our minds and express ourselves without fear of prosecution or forceful restraint. We have a nation that says, I am free to speak about God without the fear of being silenced. That all, all are equally free. Jews, Turks, pagans, and yes, the ACLU, even the Christians are free in America. We have a nation built on the principles that all may prosper. The understanding that it's ideas and hard work that open the door to opportunity and prosperity. Regardless of your skin color, regardless of your social status, regardless of your bloodline. And we have a nation where we have the ability to remain free because we are built on the principle that our liberty remains secure because each and every citizen, the whole body of the nation, has the right to protect themselves, their family, and their liberty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, understanding that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights gives us a great responsibility. When Thomas Jefferson penned those words, he did not say all Americans are created equal. He meant all men. My pastor says, what does all mean? All. All men are created equal. Thomas Jefferson, in that greatest human rights document ever written, was calling out to the entire world, saying, if you want to be free, if you want to have liberty, here is where you need to be. And this, this is how we are going to do it. If you want to be free to speak your convictions, you must have liberty. If you want to be free to share your beliefs, you must have liberty. If you want to be free, if you want to live free, you must have liberty. Thomas Jefferson believed every word that Patrick Henry said in that St. John's Church in 1775. When Patrick Henry say, said, men may cry peace, peace, but there is no peace. What would gentlemen have? What would they want? Is life so dear and peace so sweet to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but give me liberty or give me death. Without liberty, all best efforts would only achieve chains and slavery. We cannot abandon these principles, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot disregard the sacrifice of life and fortune that has spanned over 700 years 
so that we can live in a nation where all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our great responsibility now. We must prosper the liberty that has been bought and purchased with the ease and the estates and the blood of the men and women that came before us. We must promote this very same liberty throughout the world. And we must preserve this liberty for our children. If we remember, no, let me say this again. If we truly believe that all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. The words from Daniel Webster should be a call to all who love liberty today when he said, hold on to the Constitution and the nation of liberty for which it stands. Miracles do not cluster. And what has happened once in 6,000 years may never happen again. He said, hold on to the Constitution. For if the American Constitution should fail, anarchy will be throughout the world. We have a great responsibility because of this historical understanding that this nation of liberty is built on a foundation of freedom and moral law. America has become the haven of rest when tyrants oppress. She is the vineyard of opportunity. She is the spread out wide open arms to the tired, to the poor, to the oppressed, to the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. No other nation can claim this heritage, ladies and gentlemen. No other people have this birthright. This is a shining city on a hill, and we cannot hide our light under a bushel. gentlemen, my sincere hope is that you see that you have made a pledge not to an empty flag or any republic, but to a flag and a republic that stands for liberty and justice for all. today, ladies and gentlemen, to answer to that call, to that great responsibility. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is our responsibility to provide an example to the world of liberty everywhere. It is time here, now, ladies and gentlemen, for us to stand and say, we did not take an empty pledge. It is time for us to stand and say, America is worth life, fortune, sacred honor. It is time for us to stand and say, liberty is worth it. We are here because we love America. We are here because we love God. But I want to tell you, we are here because we love our children. 
And I just want to tell you today, I just want to ask you today, I just want to beg you with the humblest of hearts today, stand with me because our children are worth it. Wow, thank you Chris Ann Hall. Isn't it a great day to be in Dixie County, Florida today?